Kitchen. If this is your first class, welcome to the Talk of Extravaganza. My name is Heather, and we are so honored to have you guys here celebrating chocolate with us. Um, it's a shame that we only do this once a year because we really are celebrating chocolate every single day here in the kitchen. Um, I don't know about you, but about three o'clock every day, I'm like, I just need a little piece. And then I go to use it when I'm baking something and I'm mad at my kids who eat all my chocolate. And my daughter quickly tells me, mom, it was you. <laughs> and we always see you snitch those. Um, but we are so honored to have uh, Chef Josh here joining us from Guitard. Um, he has been inspiring us and teaching us with all the many things all day long. And I am so excited for this next class. I don't know about you guys, but I really geek out when it comes to the ingredients and things. And when he was like, do you think people would be interested in kind of going through the cocoa uh, powders? I was like, I don't care, I am. Like, this is something I love. My sister Candace and I kind of dove deep into the world of cocoa a few years ago, and it was quite apparent many of you also enjoy that because it's so fun to be able to taste something, and then you go home and you're like, I'm gonna try it, and you're like, my brownies or my cookies or whatever you decided to make tasted nothing like what you had tasted, and it goes back to where the, you're sourcing your flavors from, and this is where the cocoa powders play so much fun, and you can really experiment with them and really just upsell and just make your treats personal to what you do. So that people are always like, Mary's the best baker in the world, and you're like, it's just my cocoa. <laughs> um, and so we're excited to have you guys um, join us for this. And we're going to be making a little cookie, right? Yes, yes. We'll, yeah, we'll do a cookie that'll be your um, your litmus test, sort of. And we'll talk about all the whys and the hows, and yeah. Should be good. I'll try to not put you to sleep. No, um, no, no sleeping today. But um, if this is your first class, um, this is Josh. He's so great, and you guys will just fall in love with him. We're hoping that he'll just come back and just live here now. <laughs> I know we're, we may not be as big as Chicago, but we've got big parts I mean, here. So you got mountains. So. Yes, we have mountains, so, <laughs> and there's snow right now. So yeah. maybe we could all just convince him to stay. But we're, we're excited. You guys are here, and thank you for sharing your wisdom with us yeah. today. And Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Um, what? Oh, I don't even have the air on. Sorry. Oh, I think it, I think it was Did off he turn, and then he just turned turn it on. Okay, I'll have yeah. to turn it off. Yeah. Um, may I have a, yeah, just a rubber spatula? Yeah. No, big, no rush. Okay, I'll get it. Okay, so, so today, so what we'll touch on today is, and I'll try to not make this one boring, I promise, and Lots of questions if you have, um, but I, this was an interesting one to me because not that long ago, as a company, well, and as a pastry chef, I realized my whole career I've used one type of cocoa powder, um, and even in the retail store you go in and you see there's there's Dutch, there's natural, and and I think that's all that is offered. At, maybe I don't even know, um, but then of course different brands, and it's just it gets confusing, and then there's these things about don't use baking soda or use baking powder or this one and that one, and it's just, it's a lot. And so, Donald and I, Donald's my coworker, we, we start talking about it, and, and we're in the chocolate, we work for a chocolate company, we don't know anything about cocoa powder. We know what it is, we know cocoa powder, thank you. We know cocoa powder, but when it comes down to those questions, if someone comes to me and says, if I'm making a cake with natural cocoa powder, can I use baking powder or baking soda, which one's best? And there's, the answer, is wait, I, this is all this backwards thinking for me? Baking um, bake, uh, natural cocoa powder would typically need baking soda because of the acidity, and then we'll we'll get we'll dive into that. But I didn't know if that was true. I just hear that, and that's what everyone says. So we broke out, and I can only I only did one recipe today because I could this I could sit sit down with you for two or three hours and go over. I wish we could make fifteen different recipes and taste and compare you would be so sick at the end of it because <laughs> we were and we just <laughs> we would make so we made all kinds of products this cookie is wherever it's at you're gonna get it this cookie is one of them we made several different products and we shipped it to this is during COVID stuff we shipped it to all the sales team and then we shipped it up to the factory because they don't make things there they make chocolate and so they tasted the cookies they tasted the brownies they tasted the cake they tasted um, there was a liquid drink and I'll give you the ratio for that. And it's not it's not as good as it sounds. I don't know if it even sounds good. Um, but it's all just to test this stuff and see. So it was really eye-opening. And so it was, as, uh, and I was nervous to pitch this idea because it's, it's, it's cocoa powder. But um, 
but I'll, I'll walk you through it all. And I don't have, I think you have the recipe for the diamonds, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't have one, I have it scale. So um, whatever it says is what it is. <laughs> and I just have it measured, ready to go. Um, but um, I'll measure this quick. Uh, I'll mix this quick so you see the cookie technique and then we'll dig deeper into the powders. Um, and, uh, oh, thank you. Wow, look at that technology. <laughs> By the way, I haven't asked this all day long. How many of you are me uh, are weighers, like metric, or and then how many are cups and spoons? Wow, the cups and spoons wins, but not at the end of the day with consistency. <laughs> um, no, I'm sorry, that's me. But um, it's hard to change what you do all the time. I, I, um, my mom doesn't do a lot of baking. She she does standard cooking and baking and. She goes to recipes, that, you know, recipe books like everyone does. And she asked me, um, one day we were talking about something and I, I mentioned scales and how to do it, how to transfer your recipe from cups to, 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 um, to weight. And um, actually, can you do me a favor? My tool kit, my tool roll thing is right there. Mm -hmm. There's a zipper thing with a tiny little scale in it. Do you want to grab that? Sure. So I talked to my mom about about doing it, she seemed interested. I bought her a scale, an Escali. Escali is my favorite one. Um, they're just, I get the plastic ones because I travel with them usually. I forgot at this time. Um, but they're indestructible, almost. But, um, but I love them. I bought one for her. I don't know if I got her a little scale. And I went, <laughs> like two years later, I thank you very much. I happened to be at their house and I just looked under the counter. There it is, still in the box. <laughs> I don't care. She's not gonna switch. I don't really care. But um, but she's also my mom's funny because she asked me uh, how did it go. She has a banana bread recipe with shortening in it. She said something about something about butter, and I you no, know, I tasted it, and there was something a little greasy. And I said, you know, you can use butter for this, and it would really enhance your, in my opinion. It really enhanced the flavor of your, plus a little healthier, whatever, healthier fat. She's like, oh, I don't know, the recipe calls for shortening. I don't know if I can change it. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> you can change it. It'll be okay. Uh, I don't know, the recipe, I'm like, yeah, do we want? You know, I don't even, a couple of months later, she made some cookies, and I tasted the cookies. I'm like, is there shortening in these? She's like, yeah, I'm shortening, the recipe calls for shortening. I'm like, no, you can, you can use butter. And then I just, I, I saved my breath after that, and um, I mean, butter flavored Crisco, butter flavored Crisco. And, <laughs> and, um, and I understand a lot of it's tradition and all that, but then, so one day, I think she called me up, or I don't know what, she called, let's say she called me, let's just go with that, and she's like, oh, your sister made some banana bread, it's so good, and she's like, you'll never guess what she did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet I can guess. She used butter. And I'm like, well, I didn't know you could do that, you know? <laughs> Come on. But, um, but no, I, I love scaling. I love scale. I love scaling only because um, you can increase recipes so with ease. You can get really accurate. In the, in the, <laughs> this is going really smooth. Um, in the production world and production kitchens, um, many times you need to alter your recipes. So you're making, Let's say we're making moose cakes. Like that was one of the places I worked at in New York. We made a lot of cakes. We made a lot of moose cakes, fancy French moose cakes. And that was my job was on the, on the on the cake station to build all these things. And big volume. I mean, the moose I would make was typically in a 110 quart bowl, which is this high when you're standing next to it. And to mix it, your whole arm is inside of it. And you plastic wrap your whole arm. It's up to your armpit practically. Um, imagine that was mixed a little better and we add that in. This recipe is super easy. But anyways, um, if we didn't want to make that much mousse, you just get out the calculator. And it, actually we already had columns. Of, this one makes 30 cakes, this one makes 50, this one makes 90 or whatever. But even if you didn't, if you had cookies that are scaled in such a way and you need to, you're going to a party and you need uh, six dozen cookies, no big deal. You know this recipe does whatever number, simple math. And then my, I think my cookie recipe has, um, that's too easy. Um, three and a half grams of baking soda, let's say. Multiply that by six, 10, eight, whatever. You have a solid number. Harder with spoons. Let me do 10 spoons of whatever the thing is. I'm not gonna bash on anyone that's using cups. Not my business, I don't care. But whatever makes you happy. 
My mom wore me down, so. <laughs> Do what you want. So I'm, I'm gonna mix this nice and easy. I didn't go nuts creaming this, butter and sugar, just blend it together. You don't need air, it does nothing for you. It's this super dry looking powdery, sorry, super dry looking powdery mix, but it's gonna, there's no egg in here, there's nothing in it. So it's vegan, except for the butter. You can use short You can use short <laughs> That was pretty good. That was really good, actually. Yeah, this is a great, this is something like a, more like a tea cookie. Um, but it became a perfect litmus test for what we're doing. And, um, and I recently did a talk at some uh, University of Illinois. And... Um, I almost brought this, but I didn't bring it because I wasn't sure. I brought this chocolate solution that I mentioned, sorry, drink that I mentioned. So if you want, you can write this down if you're interested. This is kind of like, this is extreme homework. But if you ever want to really break down and get a flavor profile of cocoa powder, if you're really bored one day and you want to go to the store and compare, then you take, let me get this straight, 100 grams of water to, um, here's where grams comes in really easy. 10% sugar, so that means 10 grams of sugar. No, well, delete what I just said. 10 grams of cocoa powder, and uh, five grams of sugar, 5% sugar. Bring the water, get the water nice and hot, pour it over the two, just stir it like you would hot chocolate or whatever, and let it cool down to room temp, and it's ready to drink. It's not some warm, cozy, hot chocolate drink. And that's what I gave to all these college kids. It was so much fun doing stuff like this. Because <laughs> it looks good. You have the nice, rich colors, and they're like all excited. <laughs> but I told them, I said, it's not chocolate. It's just, and they all took drinks on their faces. It was the best. I don't know. <laughs> they can't go anywhere. I got them for an hour. But it'll give you the taste of cocoa powder without putting too much sugar in it, because then that throws the taste off. You know? But of course, as long as they're all at the same level, then, then you're okay. Okay, so this is not one that I'm too worried. How small is this recipe? This is not one where I'm too worried about over mixing either, because there's not a lot of water in here to develop um, gluten or to begin over mixing. This is very small. We'll see. Let's see how it rolls up. This is a no-brainer. This is a great like. This could almost be one of those Christmas cookie things if you make Christmas cookie plates. Put some peppermint oil or something in it. Roll it in. Um, roll it in like uh, crushed candy canes. I didn't even. I didn't even plan on baking this. Just so you know, um, I just realized that. But um, but I'll tell you how it typically gets finished. So take this. This is really small. So just for reference, you're about to see how small this is. And if it's not perfectly mixed, so what? Take it here, give it a couple of knees, which this looks good. What? Two cookies. Two cookies? Yeah, that's practically two cookies. So just give it a little bit. And that's it, done. Now, here's your... Here's your method for storage slash shaping. This will shape it into a log and then store it in the freezer. Make them now and then you're gonna store it in the freezer till Christmas. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, I'll go short ways. Long ways, I think they'll just be way too skinny. Um, so just roll it. Roll it so it's about the length and then we'll wrap it up and we'll, we'll get it tightened so it's really snug and it makes it a nice log shape. Oh, I doubled it. That's why this looks funny. I doubled it for the tests. That's it. So that's the two times of what we have. The the no, this is a, this is a single. I'm sorry, my doubling was when I made it for okay. all of you. I guess I could go that. Yeah, let's do it. And at this point, you would roll it into whatever rolling toppings you want, or would you cut it out? At, at this time, I would let it chill a little bit first. So refrigerate it for a little while, and. Uh, and then when you take it out, brush it with a little bit of egg white. Just You can do water, but a little bit of egg white gives it a shine too. 
Brush with a little bit of egg white, roll it in sugar, turbinado sugar, crushed candy canes, um, slice it and bake it. And the bake is gonna be, um, did I give you a, yes, 325 is what I like. So 325, and um, actually change, change 20 to 22 to more like 16, 18. I feel better about that. This helps you, if you have a straight edge or something, use this to kind of push it, actually pushing it forward to be easier. I do this every time. Rest your hands on the paper, push, because I folded the flap over, right? So push on the flap, tighten it up nice and tight. And then it just makes it more uniform. And then roll it up. What's terminado sugar? Terminado is sugar in the raw. Something it, it's um, sugar in the raw is a brand. So it's really coarse sugar that has that it has this rich color of molasses because most of the molasses is still remaining in the crystal. But it's really great for sugar substitutions for it's easy flavor. It's an easy flavor in a in a recipe. Um, okay, so that cookie is the cookie you're gonna eat. You're gonna eat three of them. You know what? Let's um let's start passing it out. Yeah. We'll get it in your hands so you can see colors and start to kind of analyze them. I will say that I baked them to the best of my ability, trying to figure out all three different ovens I was using yesterday, so I think they're fine. But <laughs> They are what they are, right? So it's just a little poison in it. Yeah, a little, it's little bit. A little. <laughs> so to break it down, I left them in the bags because I think these are pretty easy to see. So you're all familiar with natural cocoa powder. Wait, who uses? Does someone here? Does anyone in here use only natural powder? Does anyone in here know what natural powder is? Just your definition <laughs> of it. And I don't mean to be fun at all. No. Do you all typically buy? Dutch powder? Okay, is there a reason why? Just curious. Because grandma, grandma did? That's a reason, that's a good reason. Um, so we'll break down what this is. So, the way cocoa powder is made. Um, I was on a, I was on a um, panel on some uh, Zoom thing with a bunch of people watching. And there was a guy also with me, him and I were both answering questions. He jumped in on the what is cocoa powder question, how is it made? And I didn't know what to say because he was so wrong. <laughs> I didn't know how to, and he's like this to me, like he's uh, that many levels, like, he's like, he's like, this is how it's made, like this and this and this, and he goes, right? He said to me, and I'm like, well, I said, that's one way of making it. And I didn't know how to even fix that. So the way cocoa powder is made is, earlier in my other demo, some of you were here, I told you what unsweetened chocolate was, right? Unsweetened chocolate is chocolate that's cocoa bean that's been fermented, roasted, ground to a paste, perfectly smooth paste. And by the way, every time you eat chocolate, when you eat it, the mouthfeel that you notice, the super creamy mouthfeel, is because of the refining process. This is a sidetrack, but I think it's good to know. If you ever go eat someone's bean to bar artisan chocolate from their, from their shop where they make it right there, and you eat that, you might be able to feel fine granules. Your palate can sense, I forget the, um, the size microns, but you can sense really small particles. All of our chocolate and all big manufacturers run through ginormous stainless steel rollers, and the chocolate runs through these rollers, and they get closer and closer and closer together until it's just, again, micron levels. So that's why chocolate and how chocolate is so smooth when you eat it. It's not like someone puts it in a, up in Fairfield, up in our factory in Burlingame, there's not someone with a Cuisinart, you know, just pressing the pulse about it over and over. It's like real heavy equipment. And so, anyways, the liquor is made, and then the liquor is taken, and it's pressed in hydraulic presses. I mean ginormous hydraulic presses. And those presses press down on it and squeeze out cocoa butter, which you buy as an ingredient, or you see in the beauty industry, or whatever, it's other industrial applications. What's remaining is cake. They call it cake. So that cake is the cocoa powder, but it's not yet ground up. Then it's taken to grinders. It's the most gnarly, messy process. Like it's, it, you have to have rooms sealed off because as fine as this is, it goes everywhere. I don't know if you've ever dropped an entire bucket of cocoa powder before, 
but you, you should try it sometime. <laughs> try it out, outdoors. I, I didn't do this. I saw it happen right in front of me. This is what I used to teach. The students walking down the hall with, or down the aisle with a brand new refilled big Lexan container of cocoa powder with no lid on it. And she just did a little stumble. Down it goes. It's like, it's like fluid. It's like water. It just spreads everywhere. You can mop for a week, and you're still going to find it. But um, So anyways, that's what cocoa powder is. It's pressed cake. Cake is growing up. It's cocoa powder. Now, you should know that everything that you've purchased, purchased off of the shelf in grocery stores has a certain fat. Does anyone know the amount of fat cocoa powder? I don't think they even label it. Cocoa powder that you're used to using, the natural, the, sorry, the Dutch processed stuff, is about 22 to 24 percent fat. That's important to know because if you switch from retail products and you start shopping around for cocoa powder, just be careful what you're looking for. Although people make it pretty easy to, to buy and, and the sales people are usually pretty knowledgeable. Um, there are cocoa powders that are less fat, but that's the general one, 22, 24 percent. So if you're into fat calculation, that's important. So anyways, natural cocoa powder is the exact bean. The whole process, nothing has happened to it. I don't know if it's uh, what year it was, but the Dutch came up with an idea, it's called Dutching, to, and I don't, again, I don't know the story of why they decided this, um, to transform the taste of their chocolate by, by Dutching it. And Dutching it now it refers to the addition of an alkaline agent. I can't tell you what we use because I don't remember it. Um, honestly, it's kind of a gnarly name, but it's what everyone uses. It's some hydrochloride something. It's not that. It's not that. But it's some kind of scary name, but it's when you break it down scientifically, it's like roughly baking soda. And you can actually use baking soda to Dutch a product. So the more, the more alkaline agent you add to it, it goes from acidic to less acidic, but it also has this deep deeper chocolate body and taste to it. Um, now, if you keep on dutching it and dutching it and dutching it, you end up with, has anyone seen dark cocoa powder on the shelf? Does anyone use dark cocoa powder? Like an Oreo type thing or something like that? Yeah. And that's exactly Oreo. They have their own, this one, um, I'm not a fan of the smell of it. Um, and before you eat the cookie, I don't know what Oreo uses, but I guarantee you it's very proprietary. Most of the smell is gone. So I think now would be a good time to taste. Taste how you like, but I think you should go from natural to natural, Dutch to dark. Smell it, taste it, just see what your thoughts are. See, you might not notice anything, but this is one of those tests that I think is worthwhile. So natural is the medium? Natural is the lightest color one. The Dutch, what you know of as Dutch, is the middle one. That's the most common used powder. Uh, because Dutch has fat in it, I thought. Uh -huh. Will it look sour? It could go rancid, but a, a smell test will tell you that. Or if you're really not certain, do that water test. Mix a little bit of cocoa powder and sugar into your water. You'll taste rancidity. You'll taste it right away. Just like rancid nuts. Worst thing ever. Bite into a rancid hazelnut is disgusting. Mm -hmm. so which one has the, most fat? Um, the natural and the Dutch both have the same amount 22 24 okay. you can buy either of them in different ways you can get them less but that's more of a specific thing that you go to a manufacturer for the le the least amount is the is the dark this has 16 I think this one is 16 18 it might be 14 16 somewhere around there but it's a lot less because no one cares about the fat in this one you like the fat, the richness of the of these two. No one cares about this because they're making Oreos. I love Oreos, by the way. I'm not bashing them. I don't buy them. I will not buy them because I'll just eat them all. I was on this mission to find all their new flavors. COVID was rough, okay? The lockdown stuff. And so suddenly I started hunting down. I looked for this Brookie, Brookie Oreo. Anyone heard of this? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like it? What are your thoughts? Yeah. I'm trying to think which one I like the most now. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would after looking for it as hard as I did. I think it was the, the journey didn't match the prize, you know? It's good. But I like the, um, 
You know which one I like? I like the Neapolitan one. It's very non-traditional Oreo. But um, so anyways, Ned, sorry, Oreo conversation. Thoughts. All the same, different fat except for the one. You might not even notice that in the cookie. You want some cookies? You want some cookies? You can go. If you want. I'm trying to find the fat on the same for you. You know what? I think it is 10 to 12. Thank you very much. It's on our website, so I hope that's right. No, no, I think it is. Yes. 10 to 12 on the dark. I just thought the black has very little flavor snack. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't call that chocolate. That comes from chocolate. Remove the fat, most of it. Um, keep on dutching it and dutching it and dutching it, you just destroy it. But it does not taste Oreo. I have a recipe that I can make that tastes almost like Oreo, but theirs is very, very specific. I don't know who they buy from. You know they buy tanker, a train tanker. <laughs> right. So I get, I do get some tang on the natural one. I don't ever like eating this one. The dark one seems to be not a smooth. Mm -hmm. Could be overbaked. You mean just texture in general? Yeah. I think whoever baked those may have. <laughs> those are hard to tell when they're done, the dark ones. Yeah. They're already so dark. <laughs> All of them. So, me, does anyone like the dark ones? Prefer? Really? Oh, so much. Re what? Really? Wow. Oh, See? Love I bought a huge bag from them of the guitar black and like yeah um and that's that's the thing everyone's different so well, let's fight let's have everyone in the team up no it's different and and most of the time the dark in what we find with customers many many times the dark is used as a coloring agent 25 percent is that's how you use it no more than 25 okay because the flavor kicks in for me and i hope i don't ruin this for anyone when i taste this i taste um I taste uh, chlorine, swimming pool. And when I taste it in a solution of water, even more so. Why are you ruining my happiness? Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the effect of the, of the dutching, dutching, dutching. But keep in mind, this is a very generic cookie. I prefer either one of these over this, that's me. But um, add more sugar and it'll be fine. <laughs> um, okay, the next, next, um, everybody doing okay so far? Not to fall asleep yet. Yes. When you roll it in the peppermint before you bake it, does the peppermint melt hard? Or does it stay like sugar granules? Man, I wasn't expecting this question. I've never done it. I've never done it. So <laughs> that's a shot in the dark. <laughs> You're all going to curse me when you get home. He told me it would work. It's such a low temperature. I think that it's just going to stay probably because I just rolled other cookies in it. Day. I'm gonna go with her on that one, cause I, I, I'm protected by this this rule somehow. <laughs> but I tell you, I do like I love the terminado sugar. That's me. Like I just I like rich flavors, so I'll roll it in the sugar. Nothing happens to that sugar. It's just such a coarse crystal. Nothing happens to it. Um, do you roll it and then slice it? Or I roll it, it and then slice yeah. it. Yeah. Brush it nicely. Roll it. Get a sheet pan full of whatever it is you're gonna do. You gotta roll it in the sheet pan and get it really kicked down there. Because you're gonna lose some of it when you start cutting it. And it gives it a neat border around there. I didn't do that to any of these because I didn't want that to affect any flavor. I wanted to be very generic. Um, so the next thing we discovered when we were working with these, we went to cakes. Because of this thing with baking soda and baking powder. And um, I tried to find this file, I can't, I don't know what we did with it. I think it was just we put everything away because we didn't ever want to see it again. We had a, a PowerPoint. On the, this is the most boring PowerPoint you've ever seen in your life. It's cross sections of cake and cookies and brownies. And um, we did baking powder products. We did baking soda products. Um, clearly the, the more dense butter cookie things. Regular old brownies without leaven or, oh, this one had baking powder in it. If there was a change, it was so minimal, you would not even, so for me, I wiped out the myth of baking soda, baking powder for, because that would be baking soda, because you need the acidity, the soda needs the acidity. This one would be fine with baking powder, but I can't understand in me why this one would not work with baking soda, just technically. You're gonna have some acid in your recipe anyways. 
So I say all this to say don't worry so much about being super careful and tedious about which leavener you use. Um, we all know what baking powder is, by the way, right? Is that just to double check? Mm -hmm. Baking powder, baking powder? No? Okay. Um, so baking soda is, we know what that is, sodium bicarbonate, whatever. Baking powder is the exact same thing. Baking powder is baking soda, but it has dried crystals that uh, are mixed in with it so that when water hits those crystals, there's your acid to activate the baking soda. Same exact thing. So all of it's kind of a lot of, lot of not curtains, what's the word I'm looking for? Behind the curtain stuff? Smoke and mirrors, thank you, I didn't even close to curtains. What's that? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, um, questions on anything at this point, that's about it. It's really about, we're about there anyways. Questions, thoughts, I anything? I have to say though, the black makes the most beautiful chocolate cake. You're really fighting for this, aren't you? I, I, <laughs> I, I would fully agree with that. Yeah, it does, and that's exactly, um, I forget what customer it is, but that's exactly what it is. They want that chocolate cake because we eat with our eyes. They want you to look at that. Imagine if you made, honestly, I am, I really do like this one a lot after I use it more and more, but if you make a chocolate cake with this, it'll be a decent color. But if you put that one next to it, people are going that way because we eat with our eyes. This just tastes so sweet. Which one is that? The light, the lightest one. And I guess it's because I've been inhaling the black. <laughs> yeah, it burned all your taste buds off. So now all, is, all you taste is sugar. Sorry, they'll grow back. It's like chicken's ears; they grow back. Seriously, I love this stuff. No, I have a recipe for, what is it? It's Oreo based, but it's an ice cream cookie. I worked hard on this ice cream cookie. And um, I think it might be 50-50 Dutch. I mean, the, the, the medium Dutch and the, and, the, and the dark one. It's pretty great. <laughs> and it tempers just right with the ice cream. And I love Oreos. You should try it with all of them. <laughs> Alright, I'll do that. I'll, I'll tell you that I do that. I can taste the cinnamon. You can taste it? Yeah? Can you, you notice I, it? I, I couldn't. Oh, you could not. The okay. Oh, that's because I left it out. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if you can taste the cinnamon, you're catching some notes that I... And the only reason I left it out is because of this test. I will say the cinnamon is a great addition, but I think it would ruin the test for just tasting the powders. So... <laughs> So you got a taste around you if you can taste the cinnamon. <laughs> Why do you specify the type of cinnamon? Um, is that Carinchy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I d preference, that's all. I like Saigon a lot as well, but I get stuck between Saigon and Carinchy. Um, and my baker friend, the one that gives me tomato plants, got me hooked on this one. And it's just, um, I think it's, it's a little more bright to me than Saigon, but I love Saigon too. So your, cho your call, no biggie. Yes? Which which method does the uh, big bag of uh, Hershey's out there use? Medium Dutch is what I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait, is it a clear bag? I well, think I, I was. You have it right on the end of your. I think I was looking at it, and it, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my money on th this medium Dutch because that is the most popular. And I will tell you, I'm not here to promote Hershey's at all, but I'll tell you, I bought the little can as part of our test, did the water test. They chose a good. They chose a good. Um, process of bean whatever that I'm not gonna I have nothing against any chocolate company they did a good job with their powder they did a really good job and um sadly it wasn't blind tasting so I had but at the same time I had the knowledge of what it was so I'm going into it as I'm about to take a bite I'm like yeah that's Hershey's I grew up on Hershey's syrup I don't drink Hershey's syrup anymore I make my own chocolate milk but um but I was pleasantly surprised by Hershey's can't lie cannot lie how much of that do you think is because it's nostalgic? I don't know, because it doesn't it doesn't have that exact Hershey syrup taste. Okay. It had a really rich, deep it had a great flavor to it. When we did our cocoa test, yeah. so many people loved the Hershey's and I was yeah. like, Wait, what? Well, <laughs> they're like, this tastes like my mom's brownies. This tastes like the things that they grew up with. Well the only brownies I ate growing up were were box mixed <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So Hershey's. I love I love those brownies so much. Yeah. And that you might be hundred percent right. But I, I, yeah, and you can't take nostalgia away. Mm -hmm. You can say, oh, but wait, I had a mule hike up of 15,000, <laughs> and it's my beans, it's the only beans left. Sorry, you know, Hershey's wins. It's, it is what it is. But um, yeah, medium Dutch though, for sure. 
because that's what most people like. Yes? It is the less processed, a more expensive product, more pure, like olive oil? I mean, nah, same, same. It doesn't matter. Actually, I don't know exact prices, so I can't speak to that, but I see no reason that it would be any more costly. Um, if anything else, I still left it on, but there's no, there's no cake in there. Um, if anything else, I would see um, the more labor, the more processing that goes into it, the price, because you're paying for that machinery and so on. Um, and the dutching can happen to the powder, or the dutching can happen to the liquor. The dutching can happen to a chocolate. There's chocolates that you can eat that are dutched. Um, and those chocolates that you eat that are dutched have a little bit more of that brownie note or uh, some little bit of a cooked pudding kind of note in there. And it's a Dutch chocolate. Not everyone opens up about that. It's not a good or a bad thing. It's just a profile that fits a lot of palates. And so dutching can happen at any, any, at any point in the process of chocolate making. It's a neat trick that people have up their sleeve, you know. But, um, and if you were to taste a chocolate that's, again, we talked about chocolate in the last class a little bit, but if you were to taste a chocolate that's um, uh, very, very, that has been processed, so that to, I can't say this word, that has very little processing that's happened to it, some of these things don't taste like chocolate at all. There is a brand called Pacari. I don't know if they're still around. P-A-C-A-R-I. Very small uh, batch chocolate company. Only Ecuador beans. And um, is that I, 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 hmm? Is it Pacari? P-A-C-A-R-I? Yeah, Pacari. Yeah. They they um, have a couple lines that are they call raw, and I don't know what they're claiming to be raw. Raw would mean not roasting the beans at all. But that you need that for pathogens and, and microorganisms and stuff. So maybe they're just doing super low and super they have a, slow. They have a, a cocoa powder too that has no sweetness at all. Where do you get that from? Ecuador. From Ecuador. I mean, where do you when you order it? You go to Ecuador uh, for your cocoa powder? Yeah, well, um, I have family in Quito. Yeah. Do you really? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> because I have the bars and yeah. they have the cranberries. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're very proud of that. Yeah, they're, they're when they're you go to come up in the industry. When I went to when I landed in Quito, in the airport, there were full signs of. Um, of Picard. They're proud of their chocolate. They're, yeah, it's, they're just, it's their new industry I think they're going for. Yeah, they have some of the best beans on earth. And um, some of these, some of their really raw, they call raw bars, if you close your eyes and eat them, you won't know what you're eating exactly. Yeah, and you kind of spit it out. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> some of it's very astringent, and some of it, I described earlier, some notes of olive, some of it's very olivey. Green, very green, I'll very. I'll my, my cover to see if I have any, and I'll bring you some tomorrow. That'd be cool. Okay. Because it's a fascinating company. It but, is. but if you put up back to the Hershey's thing, I I don't have any interest in tasting Hershey's bars at this point. I just, not to be like a total snob, but give me some other cheap chocolate, I'm fine. But that's sweet. But, take the the general mass of people, give them a Picari bar, this raw whatever single origin. And they give them a Hershey's bar. You know what they're going to pick. And they love Hershey's. Do they really? They want to. They want me to bring imported chocolates to imported. them. Imported. That's funny. <laughs> and, and, and they pay a lot for a Kit Kat. And then it's really interesting because they crave our chocolate. Uh huh. Uh huh. And they, I mean, they all they want is little Hershey bars. The little, you know. Yeah, the little snack size. All they want, and they don't want nothing or anything. Just Hershey's. The funny, stuff huh? that our kids will eat out of their Halloween bags. Yeah. 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 It's funny how that, but you know, the sad part is a lot of, um, most of the people that, so Ecuador, amazing beans, although they're in danger of, of um, there's a bean that they're, that's been developed, the CCN51 is the name of it. It's a, uh, what do you call it, like a cloned thing, tree. And so they're scared to lose their heritage, they're, they're this bean, the, Nash, the, the national bean. And, um, but uh, most of the people that, if not all, that work in that industry have never tasted a final product of their harvest ever. And so it goes away and that's how they generate a lot of revenue or revenue, I should say a lot. But um, anyways, that's my soapbox with that, I'll stop with that. Um, any last questions before we close it up? And someone's four o'clock here, so we gotta make space. You're fine, you're fine. Yeah? Okay. she's ready, so. So in your research of trying all of them, what did you conclude? Like, do you like one more than the other? Or yeah, still one for one, something for another. But I will say the thing that was the most eye-opening is I didn't know how much I like natural cocoa powder. 
Because as a pastry chef, going through my whole career of just being a pastry chef, not someone that be, being a pastry chef as opposed to, I'm not saying I'm this now, but as opposed to being more of a technician, uh, I like to think that my brain has changed over time and I look at things through a different um, you know, scope. Um, I love natural cocoa powder. And more often than not at home, if I'm doing something for my family or whatever, friends, I'll grab this instead of the Dutch one. I love the Dutch one. But this one's, it just, it just opened my eyes to, why did I always look at that? Same as the chocolate cake. I look at that and I'm like, eh, I want something that's more rich. This is full of flavor. Nice acidity, a little bit of fruitiness. It's a great cocoa powder. Now, does it come through on every product? Not exactly, but that's where you start trying it out and discovering different things with it. Um, I might, if I was gonna redo my hot chocolate blend, I have a mix for hot chocolate, I would, I'd put this in it. It'd be lighter, but people would be surprised by the taste, I think. But, uh, so that was my eye-opening thing. And then discovering this flavor was just a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not here to judge, okay? It's not what I do. I don't judge. By the way, I, I, I asked to bring this out. If you are doing your working towards shifting from cups to, you don't have to, um, <laughs> cups to scaling, um, this is a must-have. Any micro scale, um, this one happens to go, it's only 200 grams, but it goes to a hundredth of a gram, which sounds ridiculous, until you're doing your R&D and you want just a little more salt. Then you go from 0.2 grams to 0.25. And this is a game changer if you're going to do anything. This is, you're not going to use this if you're making 40 tons of, of cookie dough a week, but you're going to use this to develop all of those recipes. So it's worth the investment. Um, I used to have a bunch of them at home. I've given them all away because I want people to try it, um, but it's a must-have. So, so what brand was it? This one's, do you carry micro scale? No, but we just said we will. Yeah, Escali, Escali has one. Okay. This one is AWS. Um, I forget what, the, what that stands for. Um, we, it's we probably sell something. Escali, though. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get some in. All right, cool. Escali, I would trust them all day long, Escali. But these are must have. Um, I, travel, I travel with this one everywhere. And I, it's, yeah, it's mine. Is Just take the batteries scale out. Scale or a converter? Or this is a scale. scale. Yeah. It's like a drug scale. It's a drug scale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you do get stopped at the airport, yeah, there's questions coming up. Yeah. Although the worst time I was stopped at the airport, the worst time ever, was when I was coming back from LA and we had a guy that we were working with that was working on panettone. He was from King Arthur, this guy. Great baker. Really great guy. His panettone is amazing. It's incredible. So I asked him, I said, can I have two of those to go home? So I wrapped them up and um, put them in my carry-on. I can't have those damaged, you know? I've carried a lot of weird things on the plane um, that, that should have been stopped more than this one was. So they stopped me at the security, and I go do the routine. I go stand over there and wait as they rip my bag, open, or I have to open it, they're digging through it. They pull the thing, the two Pantones out, the big, and the guy's like, you can't be doing stuff like this. And I said, doing stuff like what? He goes, you know what this looks like? I said, yeah, it looks like panettone wrapped in bubble wrap, wrapped in plastic wrap. No, that's not what it looks like. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Tell me what it looks like. I was really crabby. Like, I just was late. As he's about to say something else, kind of smart, another TSA guy walks behind him, and he looks over. He's like, oh, is that panettone? It's <laughs> <laughs> not even a joke. I'm like, yeah, it is. So goofy, but... That was the worst stop I ever had. Because he wanted it. He wanted it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at one point, I said, you know what? Keep it. I don't even care. I want to go. Yeah. No, no. You're waiting here. We're going to figure it out. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, but I've carried a lot of weird... I carried... Uh, at least they don't pick your hair. Huh? Oh, they pick my hair. Yeah, they will not pick my hair. Do <laughs> you have it in a bun? That's a thing I heard. They poke at women's buns. All right. Thank you so much again. Thank you.